just let it in. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. Hit the button, baby. Everyone who dicks wants to talk about planets. All right, so here's the deal. All right, NASA just flew a spacecraft closer to Jupiter than ever before, and all I got was this stupid photograph. No, seriously, it's been like seven weeks since I made my Jedi Juno Jupiter videos. I was all excited, taking the blue pill, being like, yay, Jupiter, we're going by there with a spacecraft. Jupiter's a fascinating planet, especially in comparison to Mars, which has 60 robots around it, and all we get is red pictures of dirt. Jupiter has tons of awesome moons, is a mystery within itself, is giant, has a magnetosphere almost as powerful as the sun, and I, with my own eyes, have seen lightning storms come out of Jupiter. So I was super duper all excited, but then, seven weeks later, and I'm like, what the hell, man? Why have we only gotten one photograph? And I know some apologists will be like, well, it takes a long time to download the data, or it takes a long time to vet the data. But that's not how it should be. This is a public agency. And I shouldn't have to wonder why they need seven weeks to clean up what it is they don't want me to see. Wouldn't you agree? All right. We've never seen Jupiter quite like this. Actually, dude, that photograph is not that impressive. I mean, I can't say that like, oh, wow, that photograph is so much clearer and more detail than we've ever seen before. Wouldn't you agree? NASA's Juno spacecraft flew closer to the giant planet than any spacecraft ever, revealing stunning images and gathering detailed information about the planet for NASA scientists. The record-breaking mission was launched five years ago, and the spacecraft has traveled 1.8 billion miles from Earth just to reach Jupiter's orbit. In its greatest moment, Juno flew about 2,600 miles above Jupiter's swirling clouds, closer than any spacecraft has ever flown near the dangerous planet. And instead of giving us wonderful 4K video of this event, we've gotten one singular photograph. And you know cameras nowadays take 60 photos per second. So we've gotten 1 60th of a second of data from this mission. Now we waited 10 long years, and it's like, after 10 years of waiting, the J Juno has unbuttoned the top button on her button-down shirt. The one you only button if you're Neo, a nerd, or wearing a tie. So yes, at this moment, I'm not that excited. I feel teased. In its greatest moment, Juno flew about 2,600 miles above Jupiter's swirling clouds, closer than any spacecraft has ever flown near the dangerous planet. The feat was extremely difficult to coordinate. To put that in perspective, it is roughly the same distance between New York and Los Angeles. Oh yeah, and they put Legos on the mission so that human space exploration is not dead. Asterisk. Juno's daring mission was further complicated by Juno's radiation belts. The spacecraft is loaded with a suite of instruments scientists can use to measure different elements of the planet. The instruments can be used to measure Jupiter's composition, gravity, magnetic field, and the source of its 384 mile per hour winds. The spacecraft's instruments had to be turned off when it first entered Jupiter's orbit on July 4th to avoid complications caused by the planet's radiation belts. In its record-breaking approach, Juno completed just one of its scheduled 36 orbital flybys. NASA plans to release even more detailed photos of Jupiter's north and south poles at a later date, not to be determined or mentioned here in this article. You can just guess, cross your fingers, and pray. Given the billions of miles between Earth and Jupiter, it will take days for those images to be downloaded to Mission Control. So you're telling me it took seven weeks to download one photograph? I doubt that. I mean, I know it takes a long time to download the data, but I think we got more data from the Pluto mission faster, and it's twice as far away. Scientists around the world are anxiously waiting to see what the spacecraft digs up. There's also some unusual cargo aboard the spacecraft. Titanium Lego models of Galileo Galilei, the goddess Juno, and her husband Jupiter were included inside the spacecraft, along with a plague dedicated to Galileo. Oh my god, NASA put a plague on Jupiter? Why would you do that? Oh, plaque. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, the Lego figures may never return home. Why'd you say may? It's like there's a chance this thing's gonna come back to us, or if like Jupiter gets pissed off, it's gonna eat the thing and then spit it at us. That don't make no sense. Anyway, overall, the output has been disappointing. They should have at least prepared us like, hey, you're gonna have to wait three months to get anything good except for one sad photo of Jupiter. But whatever. I guess the people who don't like NASA win this round. Still, I'm gonna hold that hope for some awesomeness. Asterisk. All right, God bless everyone. Peace out.